have an idea in your mind of something you want, and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want, create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's interview. Today, I am interviewing Jenny Murphy. She is the creator of a product called Selfie Site, which is a really fun product that she and her daughter kind of came up with together. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to let her tell you more about it. And today we are in the uh, middle of, let's see, I have construction going on at my house. I'm babysitting a dog that's kind of barky and she has a child that might wake up. So who knows Mm -hmm. what will happen, but we're going to do the best that we can because we're moms and we're entrepreneurs and that's how we roll. So Jenny, thank you so much for coming and and chatting with me today. My pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about your product and how it came to be? Absolutely. Well, um, I have an 11-year-old daughter, and around the time she was nine, she had this clever idea that um, somebody should invent something that helps you get look in the right place when you take selfies. And um, well, it was a really clever idea, but at the time I was teaching and there just was really no time to try to implement something like that. So um, we just put it on the back burner and then our son was born and I started staying home with him and all of a sudden I had a little bit more time and, and I, des- I like to keep projects going. So I had that desire to work on something. So then we, we started working on bringing her idea to life. So when you, when I met you, you had some really specific challenges. Your, your husband is a coach, right? So he, he's a teacher and a coach. So he's got right. a, a very busy schedule. You have two children. One is a baby. Mm-hmm. And so you came to me because there was very specifically time was a big problem for you. Can mm-hmm. you talk a little bit about how you used to feel about time when I first met you? Um, very frazzled. Very <laughs> um, like yes. there's not enough of it to go around at all. I had a lot of big projects in mind. I had her idea I wanted to start. I had a summer reading tutoring program I wanted to start. Um, we adopted my son. I wanted to have his adoption baby book done so we could start talking to him about that, which was a big deal. Uh, I wanted to clean out the attic and make about eight different years worth of baby books. Um, I don't know. I just felt like I had all these monster goals and um, very little time that I could spend on them. So I sort of felt beaded about all of it. Um, and it made my wheels kind of spin. It kind of made me tired. And um, I think that's where I was when I met you. Did you say the word defeated? You felt defeated by it? Right. Because I just felt like I, I knew if I had the time to do it or felt like if I had the time to just make everything go away and focus on these things that I could get them done and I would feel really good about it. But there were so many other life things happening that were wonderful. Yeah. I just couldn't get to them. So how do you, how would you describe besides frazzled in that moment, were there, were there any other feelings that you were experiencing around this idea that there's so much I want to do? I want to do it for me. There's stuff I want to do for my kids. There's stuff I want to do for my family and my house. What besides frazzled came up for you? Um, I think I was frustrated that I couldn't get to it all. I don't, I don't really know what else other than that defeat, frustrated, kind of wishing I had that time. Um, and I, I didn't, some of it felt like my own choice. I chose to stay home. That was my choice. I wanted to be with my son when he was little. Um, so I felt like it was my choice to do these things and that made it so that I, I didn't have time. Was there any blame I know sometimes when I feel like everything is coming down on me, I either want to blame myself, like I'm not efficient enough or productive enough, or I'm making bad choices. 
And sometimes it feels really good to blame other people. Did you have any of that? Yeah, I think it was more a little bit of jealousy. Like I think I was a little bit jealous that my husband could have his career and things could kind of keep going in the order he wanted them to go. Right. Um, and for me, they felt kind of like lots of stops and starts. I, I worked for a while before my daughter, then I was home. Then I went back, then I was home. I was shifting my career around um, and he, he didn't really have to. So I think I was a little jealous that he didn't have to. But yeah, 100%. grateful at the same time. I know, I know. And he's doing a great job. And yeah. um, so there's a lot of gratitude there too. But um, yeah, yeah. There's a bit of that. And there's, there's a lot of shooting, right? Like I remember when I was home with Jack, which was a long time ago, but I really distinctly remember like, oh, John can just go pee by himself during the day. Nobody <laughs> like sticks their fingers under the door and says, daddy, where are you? Right. Like, he just goes to the office. And, and the other thing was like, oh, he could just go out to lunch. Right. A lot of freedom. Yeah. And so at the same time, at the same time that I was like grateful that I got to stay home and what a privilege it was, there's also this other thing of like a little jealousy and a little resentment on my end. And then of course you feel bad and you feel like judgy of yourself. Cause like, you're like, shut up, shut up, Jen. Why right. are you feeling like this? Because you just should, you should just be grateful. Right. right? Just, the gift, they're only little one. These come back. It's just a roller coaster. You know, you weave yeah. in and out of all those feelings. So that's well, I, re- I remember in some of our first conversations when we started working together that you were really frustrated. You were like, I, I have literally like an hour and a half if he stays asleep mm-hmm. and there's all of these things I have to do and you really wanted it, but you were really trying to figure out the time management thing. So I'm curious, tell us a little bit about where, how you got your business kind of in the momentum, taking action, carving out time. Like what were some of the changes you had to put in place? Yeah, I think there were a couple of big kind of mental shifts I had to have. Um, one of them, I, I don't know if it's, you know, our paths to, to adding our son to our life that m- made it so that I feel like I need to be with my kids 100% of the time. Like I need to be the, per- the person that is watching their every move, there for when they fall or watch them everything all the time. And I felt like it had to be me, like that it was only me. Um, so that was a shift. And it, the thing that helped me was something you mentioned, um, that when you make different choices, you help other people to show their strengths. So you give them an opportunity to show their strengths. So when I'm not watching, when I'm not home and my husband is, who's perfectly capable, wonderful father, <laughs> right. like, it gives him the chance to be that guy that he's, he's fabulous. And it gives the kids a chance to have that relationship with him, with me out of the way. And they do silly, fun things that we wouldn't um, when I'm around. So I think that was a big one for me. Like stepping away actually can be good for everybody, including me. Not sometimes. Right, 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 right. I always say that time mastery starts with mind mastery. Like it's really not about having a better calendar because people are always like, oh, if I only had the right beautiful planner or the or a better calendar, like it, it's, it's not quite the solution. Right. Which I everybody was frustrated with at first because I was, when I came to you, I was like, I just want to get it done, get it done, get it done. I remember that. Because in the beginning, it's like, no, 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 we need to back up and think about how you're managing time and I kind of grumbled about it at first. (laughs) (laughs) You and everybody else grumbles about it, but I find it to be the most effective way to make a shift in our lives. And it it just has this little domino effect that I think has been really helpful. Can you talk about some of the dominoes that you've seen fall since you started managing your mind in that way? Yeah. I mean, it's for me, it's little things, but that's all. Yes. But they're big, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just along the lines of letting other people show their strengths. I, I felt my daughter had a new violin teacher coming over for the first time over the summer. And I felt like I needed to be the one to greet her when she came to the door to introduce them and get her settled. And I felt like that was my job. But before she came, I wanted to run a few errands. So I'm out running around running the errands and I knew I wouldn't get them all done if, if I was the one. And I just was, I paused and I'm like, what? I, I don't need to be the one. Oh my God. That's doesn't have to that's be big. <laughs> <laughs> that's so big for a lot of people, but it was a big deal for me. And I just texted my husband and said, you know, I'm not going to be there in time. Here's her name. Here's when she's coming. Can you say hello? I'll be there before she leaves. He said, sure. In that moment, can you describe how you felt? 
Yeah, it was very liberating. Very like I felt like a little bit more in control of my time. Like life goes on. <laughs> this is not. I'm I'm making it a big um, and I just felt like I owned a few extra minutes of my day. So it was yeah. helpful. I know how that feels to have your list and you're in the car and like there's traffic or there's another red light and like you start to get that panicky feeling in your yeah. and you're and you're like doing that thing where you're driving and you're at the wheel and you look to the side to the clock to the wheel to the yeah. clock to the wheel to the clock to the wheel to, and like you, you start right. to get more and more jammed up so letting that go like you're saying it's a small thing but I actually know it's a that's a big thing yeah it was helpful um, and I think I, I don't remember specific instances when I had done that since then, but I remember that one and it, it was, it was good. That's so wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Now I know that when we start to do this work, that it's not smooth. Like we go step forward and maybe two steps back or two steps forward, one step, but like it's kind of herky jerky or roller coaster is how I usually describe it. Right. What are some of the, um, the, the troubling thoughts that you struggled with while you were trying to create more time so you could ha- create your, grow your business? Like what were some of the negative things you battled in your mind? Um, well, I'm home with my, with my son. So I feel like it's my job to keep the house in order, like to do the laundry and do the shopping and put things away and clean things up and all the things. That, yeah. All those things, they should be just taken care of. Mm-hmm. But when he's awake, I'm also thinking I want to be with him and I want to take him to the park and the playground and do all these other things. So I'm not really doing a whole lot of chores and tasks while he's awake. It's just Mm -hmm. kind of how I roll. So when nap time comes around, initially there's this little pull. Okay, so I really want to be working on my business and carve this time out, but there's dishes in the sink and the laundry to be done and, you know, the clock's ticking for the day and for the nap time. So I had to kind of just maybe throw a few more tasks in while he was awake because, again, I don't need to have my eyes on him 110% of the time. (laughs) Um, But also I had to give up some of the the chores that needed to be done. So what? So there are a few extra dishes in the sink or I'll do the laundry later. Uh, I had to kind of carve that nap time out as my time to work on the business and kind of put that boundary in place. It's so interesting in in some of the stuff I've talked about this month with this topic, I talk about the rules that we have in place for ourselves and how they actually make our life harder. So, you know, does the laundry need to be done one load at a time or can I do all of the laundry at once in a batch? Right, right. And then and get more time back. I actually do that with my my marketing and my writing. Like I do everything kind of in one batch so that it's like one energetic push rather right. than Oh my God, what am I going to put on Instagram today? <laughs> oh my God, what am I going to put on Instagram today? Right? right. I like batch everything. And although it takes more time, it's just a, a less energetic spend every single day. So I think that's a smart strategy for yourself. Yeah, it's been helpful. Were there any other strategies that you found like that you could recommend to other women who are trying to get a business off the ground or grow a business and they feel this, this like guilty pull of having to do all the other things? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think another one for me was that when you're always sacrificing yourself, you're doing all the self-sacrifice stuff that a lot of women do, a lot of moms do, that it's not quite the same thing as love. Like, I, <laughs> I it, think that's brilliant. It's, it's like very close because, you know, you give so much up when you love someone and you just are fine with it. And it was a funny story. It kind of made me think of this. I was taking my son for a walk in the stroller and I literally had something in my shoe or like a little piece of a rock or something like that. And I just kept walking. <laughs> like, I realized, what are you doing? Stop. He's going to be fine. He's not going to care at all if the stroller stops, right? Mm-hmm. Take the rock out of your shoe. <laughs> oh my God. That is the most brilliant metaphor ever. Right? Be more comfortable. Stop doing the things that are driving you bananas because most of the time no one else is going to care. That's so true. Take the rock out of your own shoe. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Like we tell ourselves so many stories about what the other person needs and how they will feel and just take the freaking rock out of your shoe. I think it becomes such a habit. Like I don't even notice. I think that was the other thing. Like I don't even notice I'm doing it. So like, I walked for a little while with this thing in my hand. I was like, that's 
fine. It's no big deal. It's not. Um, and then you know, and make these little changes, I think, that can make a difference. So. Since you've made these small changes, which I know are actually big changes, and I really don't want to downplay them. <laughs> it's a um, what have you mm-hmm. noticed other people in your family kind of doing to step up? Or like, what, what has changed with the family dynamic? I think that people are a little bit more aware that I have some goals of my own little things I'm trying to accomplish and they have some respect for that. So that's nice. Not that they weren't respectful of it before, but I get it. I don't know. And I think that I'm more willing to ask for help. Like I have given my daughter a few extra jobs and I think she's, she's capable. It's my own fault. Really. I don't give out a ton of tasks to do and, I think she's realizing, oh, okay, I guess my mom needs some help or I'm, I'm capable of doing these sort of things too. And yeah. um, she's kind of risen to the occasion. Yeah. And it makes, and it goes back to that idea that when you give somebody uh, the opportunity to show their strength, like it only helps them develop themselves even more. Right. right. I, yeah, I think so. Yes. How uh, has your approach to your business changed in terms of how you're feeling about your business? Because I know that when we first met, it was kind of weighing you down in that, like, I really want this, but I'm not sure how I'm going to make time for it. Do you have a different perspective on your business now that you've done all this mental work? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's like a piece of the day. So it's, it's part of my routine. It's part of my day. I think one of the things that I worked on was goal setting. And that was for me because, you know, when I first came to you, I had a 19 different big goals and um, I think part of it for me was narrowing that down to set and think about and work on and set these little micro goals for and deadlines for, and it just kind of created this little yeah sense of calm and um, of chipping away at things instead of everything feeling so massive and unattainable. And yeah. so that's been helpful. What have, what, what moves forward in your business? Have you noticed, like, what are some things that you've been able to cross off your list? Yeah, um, one of them was kind of establishing a good relationship with a graphic designer. So that was a big to-do item for me and to have that going is great. And um, another one was to um, step into a retail store. I really wanted to set up relationships with two or three, but I had set this one goal to step foot in this particular retail store by a certain date. And I felt I had I had the product here. I could have done this months ago, but... I felt like I didn't quite know how to do it right or that I needed to learn something new and I just didn't do it. So finally, when I set the deadline and I did it, it was great. They were so wonderful and I walked out with an order. So, um, so proud of you. Yeah, it's been great. I really want to point out to people that you and I have not been working together for years. You did these, you, you did this in three months. And I really want people to understand that within three months, they can make a huge shift in their mindset and in their behavior Mm -hmm. and in their outcomes. Like people, it doesn't take, if you're committed, like you were committed and you, you like really carved in the time to make the changes. And like you, you used me, like in our group, there are people who won't show up to, to coaching calls, but you actually showed up to the coaching calls, asked questions, got help. And you really like you did it in three months. Yeah. It's been, um, it's been a whirlwind. I feel like I've, but I've committed to really wanted to dive into all that you had to offer because I felt like it was going to be so great. And it really was, um, oh, good. all those modules, all those videos, all that work. It was such a great time out for me to really consider what my own, these limiting thoughts that you've brought up or, and how that, ends up creating time for you and creates a mindset for you and helps you create goals. And I don't know, I found it to be very, very powerful. I talk about you a lot. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm really proud of you because I know how, well, I won't say like resistant you were, but like how worried you were in the beginning about like, I literally don't know how I'm going to do this. And you have made it happen and you have done really hard things. And I want to honor that you, you did that. People can hire a coach and then and still not follow through, but you did that. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Can you can you give any is there any other piece of advice that you'd really love to share with other women like you out there who are dying for a little piece of something for themselves, but they just don't have the time? Um, well, first of all, they should work with you and do all 
the number one place to start because I spun my wheels for at least a year before I, um, and I had heard your name several times. It was like it kept coming at me <laughs> and um, I should have gotten involved with you sooner. Well, thank you for really that. Big difference maker. And I think I would be just reiterating a lot of the things that I've learned would be, you know, do you, oh, this is a big one. Do your target market research. Oh my God, girl. <laughs> Go yes. Invest all kinds of money and time in your idea, whatever it might be. Talk to your friends, get some feedback, do that. Set those goals. I don't know. Just have fun with it and not be so yeah. concerned that you might bring it right. Um, yes. That nice. you, yes. That was a big one for you. Like I, and the other, the, the last thing I really want to like honor you for is you came, you skipped over some fundamental things and had invested yeah. a lot of money in your business, but you still felt like you were floundering. And I asked you to go back to the fundamentals and somebody, somebody else might've been like, screw off. I am <laughs> not going back. I've already invested all the time, but you were willing to be like, oh, wow, I really skipped over that. And I can see that it's fundamental and I'm going to go back. Like you, it's, it had to have been humbling. And I was so freaking proud of you that you wow. did that humbling, vulnerable work that many people would have been like, screw it. There has to be another way. And you didn't, you went back and it, it like served you in so many ways. It has, it has been great. And it's influenced like some new packaging we're going to do and the way relationships, building relationships with people. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of different, it's had a lot of different yeah. impacts, but yeah, it's been helpful. Well, tell us how we can find your product because it's really cute and it's, it's perfect for a very, so tell us about the product so that we can know more about it. Right, right. So my daughter had this idea, you know, no one ever looks in the right spot when they take a selfie. You're always looking at yourself. So in the picture, your eyes kind of look <laughs> it's so it's just weird. It looks odd. And you sort of miss that moment, the look in someone's eyes. Um, and it's just irritating because someone like me will need to take the picture over and over before I look in the right spot. So she had this idea to make something that gets you to look in the right place. So we um, ultimately landed on these vinyl stickers that go on the face of a cell phone. And they're decorative and fun and it helps you personalize your phone and it helps you look in the right place. So they're really, they're really fun. It's a great gift. And, um, and kids really love them too, like tweens, right? Tweens really yeah, love them. Tweens, you know, when they get there, a lot of them when they're around 12-ish, their first phone, and that's the first thing they want to do is personalize it. They want to make it so that it reminds them of them. I have, I had one, my niece, she told me, I, I need my phone to match my outfits and give off the same vibe as me. So, you know, they have them in their hands all the time. So yeah. they, they want to be happy when they look at that it. That never occurred to me. I know. So, and it, that's what target market it, research, that's what target market research will tell you, Right. 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 And one of them even said, I want it to light me up. They want their phones to light them up. It's just so sweet. And they're very interested in causes and supporting causes. Oh, yes. Something that was close to my heart. So we're going to be doing um, several stickers that benefit national. Uh, oh, fantastic. Okay. So, yeah, we're really excited. So how, do, how do people find it? Is it selfiesite.com? Well, if you went there, it would direct you to the proper place. But the, okay. the site is takeabetterselfie.com. Okay. And our retail store, if you're a local person, is Dazzle. And Great. Manlius. In Manlius, yeah. Um, oh, we're excited. Yeah. And Congratulations. also on Facebook at Selfie Site, on Instagram at Selfie Site Picks. Okay. Great. I'll write those down. Thank yeah. you so much, Jenny, for your time because I know this is nap time and I know it's very dear <laughs> to you. So thank you for giving up a half an hour to chat with us today. Oh, my I admire pleasure. other women who are in the same space as you. Wonderful. It was nice talking to you. You too. Thank Bye. You. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week, and remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye!